everyone, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a Valentine's themed card created using distress markers for a watercolor background and to, stamp, to color in my stamped images. To start, I am die cutting a piece of watercolor paper using one of the stitched rectangle dies. And this is going to be the base here for my design. Then I am stamping a tree stump from the Critters in the Forest and then one of the hedgehogs from the Sending Hedgehogs mini stamp set onto this watercolor paper. However, I didn't want the outlines of my images to be black for this particular card. I wanted it to kind of be more of a seamless watercolor type look. To achieve that and still have some guidelines as for painting in with my distress markers. I'm going to stamp both of these images using the Antique Linen Distress Ink. It's a really light ink and because I'm using quite a bit of browns and things for this particular card, this really worked well. It was a nice light color that really gets covered up but yet still gives me enough of a guideline to go on to paint in my image. I am using a large acrylic block here from Lawn Fun and scribbling my distress markers onto the block and then I have a fine tip paintbrush where I'm just picking up a bit of color. I dip my paintbrush in the water and then onto my acrylic block where I've scribbled on that distress marker color and then picking up a little bit of that color and then filling in the image. And I am going to keep doing this until I get the entire thing colored in. I did do the hedgehog here first using a little tattered rose for the body of the hedgehog. And then I'll use some browns and things. All the colors that I used are listed on my blog. This is the brushed corduroy I used first and I ended up not really loving the color. I kind of thought, oh no, I've I've really messed up after I had gotten quite a bit of the image colored but I didn't want to start all over with my image and I'm kind of glad I didn't. After I got it, him colored in I really liked that for a base color. I'll go back in with a little gathered twigs here and even pumice stone and add some more definition. So here's the gathered twigs. and I'll just kind of start laying that color down here and there. It's pretty damp still so the color is moving a bit. There's no perfection here especially with a watercolor look. The beauty in this is the imperfection. As it dries a bit and my paintbrush dries out I get some of those little strokes you can see there and it really fills in nicely. So where some of it kind of bleeds out with the water. Some of it has a little bit more definition, which I really like. I'm going to go ahead and take that gathered twigs now and color in the tree. Lay down that my base color here. The great thing is some of it is a little bit darker than others and it's still all that gathered twigs color. I love how it really starts to take shape the more color you lay down onto the design. I'm going to continue to paint here and I'm going to put a little music in while I finish coloring this portion and I'll be back in a little bit with the next step.
I have stamped a balloon string there using from the Hello Sunshine stamp set using pumice stone ink and then I have simply colored a little bit of an outline there using barn door distress the dis barn door distress ink marker just around the outside of the balloon and then I'll pull in that marker color with a damp paintbrush to fill in the whole balloon design. There is one of the balloons. I thought maybe I needed two of them after I got this one colored in. And I love that this gives the illusion then of darker where I actually use the marker on the edge of the stamp. And then when I use the water to pull the color to the inside of the stamp, it makes it lighter. It has a really nice kind of gradient of color there. I'll go ahead and stamp my other balloon tail and use the same stamp again. However, I like to leave a little bit of a border there at the top or around the edge, I guess I should say, with these stitched rectangles. So I'm going to just mask that off before I stamp the balloon. And again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Pull that color into the center of the balloon design. And that is looking really good. The whole design is coming to life, I think. Now that I have the balloons stamped, I am ready to start painting in some of the background. And I have a larger brush, a more kind of bullet, bigger brush. And I'm using some tumbled glass distress ink to paint in my sky. Now before I actually pick up my color, I am taking just a wet paintbrush. It's not terribly wet. I guess I should say it's more damp. And dampening the background here. And then I will pick up some of that tumbled glass distress ink color and lay it down. That way the ink kind of just starts moving out on its own. And it'll just kind of move around. It's very, very light. I did not want this to be really dark. And I'll just keep moving the blue around until I get it to looking just the way I want it to. Once I have the sky filled in, I need to create a little bit of a landscape. I'm going to use some of the pumice stone again with this larger paintbrush and simply paint in a little bit of ground here. And it has a slightly curved edge just to give that illusion of ground. And then I'm pulling the color down a little bit to lighten it. I don't want to have the color come all the way to the bottom edge. I want it to be darker near the tree stump and then just really lighten up because once all of this paint has dried, I will stamp my greeting there near the bottom of this panel. So there is the ground all nice. Make, keep adding color until I get it looking exactly the way I want. Once this has dried a bit, I'm going to take a little bit of the Mode Lawn Distress Ink. Well, first I'm going to fill in a couple areas here, just a little bit dark. Add some little bit of shadowing again with the pumice stone. And if I don't quite get it, like I got it a little too dark, so I'm going back with a little bit of water and kind of pulling it out away. And I can also go back in with just a little bit more blue, cover up some of that a bit if I got a little overzealous with the, the shadowing. Once I have that and all of this has dried, and you can hit that with a heat tool if you want to, to speed that up a little bit, I'm going to take and go ahead and stamp my greeting. I it's dry here at the bottom. I'm going to stamp it off once to make sure that it looks good. Just using a black dye ink and stamping the Scenting Hedgehog's Greeting. Now it needs a little bit of grass, I think, around the base of the tree stump. It'll just add in another level and layer of color. So I'm taking my fine tip paintbrush again and it's a very dry, just a damp paintbrush. It's not very wet picking up that mode Lawn Distress Marker color and then kind of just using a little flicking technique to add some little blades of grass here and there all the way around the base of my tree stump. If for any reason the 
paper wasn't all the way dry, kind of near the right edge there where I had added some additional water to thin out where I had tried to shadow. It bled a little bit and so I waited till it was dry and I actually hit it with a heat tool a little bit and went back over it again to add a little bit more definition. And you can fill in as much or as little as you want. Once I had this done, I wanted to add a few more hearts. This is a Valentine's themed card. And so I'm taking little teeny tiny hearts, one from the Sending Hedgehog stamp set and then another one from the Hello Sunshine. And using the Worn Lipstick and Picked Raspberry Distress Inks to stamp those onto my card. And then I'll use my Fine Tip Paintbrush again, damp with water, to smooth out the solid ones and for the outline pull that color to the inside much like I did with the balloons. So I'll just add a couple more of these here and there and then I think that really helps kind of create that whole love theme. Take my damp paintbrush and just smooth out these a little bit and then for those small ones Kind of re-wet that, pull in that color from the outside, and if it doesn't pull in, go ahead and scribble your marker on your acrylic block and you can just paint it in with your paintbrush to really fill it in to give it that definition of color. Now that I have all of the painting done, I have die cut a panel for the base of my card using the A2 size stitched rectangle die and I did that from one of the Lawn Fawn pattern papers. This has got little white hearts on a gray background. I didn't want it to take away from the design but I thought that the pattern really kind of made drew the attention to the watercoloring. I'll go ahead and adhere my die cut background to my card base and then I will adhere my watercolored panel to that and I'm going to adhere it slightly skewed because I'm going to use some washi tape to tape this panel in place. So I'll add some adhesive first. I wanted it to look like I, it's kind of um, just taped to the card. I didn't want it to be exactly perfect. This is some little white on white washi tape, a little skinny washi tape. Again, I purposely chose something that was very light so that it wouldn't take away or detract from the design of the card. Then I have a sprinkling of Sweetheart Mix Pretty Pink Posh sequins that I just scattered about. I'll adhere those with some Zots Bling Glue Dots and then color in the balloons and the little hearts there with the Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Marker. And finally, I decided to add some little clear sequins, or pardon me, gemstones to my sequins to kind of round out that whole bling look. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing fun ways to watercolor with your Lawn Fawn stamps. Thanks for watching!